So we just got out of Independence Day Resurgent. Um, we have the IMDb. All right. Uh, the movie stars Liam Hensworth, Thor's brother, uh, Jeff Goldblum, Bill Pullman. Yeah, returning from the first one. Uh, yeah. Maka Moreau as the daughter. She's the original daughter, isn't she? I'm not really sure. Because I know the son isn't. No, she's not. Oh, all right. Well, she looks like her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, uh... Uh, then you have Travis Hope as Charlie, uh, Liam Hensworth's best friend in the movie. Uh, Jesse Usher is uh, the son of Will Smith from the first movie. And Vivica Fox. Alright, so the film itself like takes place 20 years after the attack from the first movie in 1996. And we've used alien technology to... like build our own, uh, like, military weapons, aircraft, and preparing for if another alien attack happens. So, I mean, of course, by the title, it happens again. But, spoiler alert, right here, there's a twist, is that there's another force out there that actually came to help us, which I loved, and they came, like, they, we sent, they sent out a transmission, we accidentally destroyed their pod, that was going to save us, and then the aliens from the first one. No, it, it's not it was not accidental. Well, I mean, like, we were given the option, should we fire or should we hold? And they were like, yeah, let's fire. It's us. It's um, it's human It's human nature. We were going to fire anyway. And then, and then spoiler ends there. And then, and the aliens attack again, and we have the sequel to Independence Day. Now, overall, I, I mean, it's... Okay, like, this is a B movie. Like, this is, like, I felt like this was, like, sci-fi original movie when it comes to, like, entertaining-wise. It was, like, critics are giving it a lot of smack. I think, honestly, it's not a terrible film, but is it a good film? It's, like, honestly, the best comparison, it's, like, a Michael Bay film. Like, it literally, like, I, I lo- it takes about 30 minutes just to establish everyone. Oh, so-and-so is here, so and so is there, and it, it, can be considered as character developing, but then again, there are certain characters like the annoying kids that were like randomly there. Oh, my boyfriend died. We were going to go see our grandparents, the drunken sailors. I mean, you had that in the first one also, but like there, there was a purpose for them. These characters, like what purpose do they serve? The sailors they do, but the kids come on. I mean, even the father coming back, Jeff Goldblum's dad, I was like, really? He's alive. Um, I thought it was, like, the way that they... They made everybody expendable. Like, if you had no purpose, you did die, regardless of you being a character. Like, Will Smith's wife, from the first one, is in this one, and her purpose is to have an emotional connection to the son, because she does die. And I thought that was interesting, and the attack when it does happen is cool, too. The gravitational pull getting to the Earth's core. That's, like, a really smart idea, but I mean... As it's executed, it's just normal destruction film. It gets better when you find out the race. I mean, I'll get into my overall score in a moment, but what do you guys have to say? Cadillac, Rashawn, what do you guys have to say about it? Uh, do you want to go first or me? Um, the movie, I thought the movie was good. Um, the premise was kind of sort of the same, but yeah. overall, I liked the movie pretty much, like, and they're ending it with a sequel. By the way, they ended it. They, you know, there's going to be a sequel coming up, and I honestly can't wait for it. Um, like I said, the premise was pretty much the same, except uh, like Rashawn mentioned earlier, that you actually get to see the aliens walk about instead of them just seeing them in their pods or in their spaceships. You get to see them like on the ground attacking the Earth and whatnot. But overall, I really like this movie. All right, Rashawn, do you, do you, how do you feel about it? Like, are you more, like, towards the negative side? Because that this is the real ground barrier right here. Because, I mean, I, I've settled on what score I'm going to give it, but go on. Uh, me, I'm more of, like, I'm more of the positive side. I really had no expen- expectation for this movie at all. Like, I thought this was going to be a horrible movie from the jump because I'm, like, it's another sequel to a movie that came out 20 years ago, and we're getting another rehash or something else and I actually enjoyed the movie more than I actually thought I would I thought it was going to be more of 
kind of how you said more of like a B sci fi movie ish, but it did better than I thought. Um, I was kind of happy I got to see the aliens' boots on the ground for once and seeing them with their weapons, more of their technology of their guns and how we took their technology, bring it to our technology, and we're able to basically have better interstellar travel of going from different planets. Like, they had a base on Saturn. I was kind of shocked with that one. I was like, okay, you got the moon, but, oh, you're actually going further out there. That's really nice. And to show that the entity that was there to help us, kind of t- saying that there's more species out there. So I'm kind of wondering, how many other different aliens there are? How many are good? And is it just these aliens are the bad ones? It gave me more questions than answers. But I did enjoy the special effects in this one. I did like the flying. I think Jesse Unter, uh, Usher did actually fine as... um. This uh, Will Smith's son in this one because I watch him on uh, Survivor's Remorse on Stars. He's really funny on there. Uh, I kind of want to see how his acting ability was, and he was serviceable. This is actually the only Liam Hensworth movie I actually like. No Hunger Games love? Eh, really. I like, really like. I forget he's even in there. <laughs> I really forget he's in there. It's more of like Josh Hutcherson and uh, Jennifer Lawrence for Hunger Games. When you get down to him, like, no one loves Gale. He, he didn't get the girl at the end. So, um, I like Bill Pullman in this as him as the crazy person this time. But he was right, just like how the other guy from the first movie, he was a crazy guy and everyone thought he was wrong. And, hey, at the end he was right too. And he did the same thing. Oh, um, yeah, he did do the same thing. Yes, it was like the crazy guy being... Making contact with aliens, and he's the one who saves the day. Kind of, at the end. But yeah, like, can, can I actually talk about that? Because, yeah. like, I was going to say, like, you know, the ending literally, like, there were so many things, like, I was looking at my watch when they said, we're going to go into the mother- motherboard and we're going to blow up the ship. I was like, oh, it's ending right after the attack? I was just like, okay. And I was like, there's a good hour in the, of the movie. No, actually, no, at that it's point... It was 40 minutes, exactly 40 minutes left. And I was just like, how are they going to end this? Because it seemed like every instance it was like, oh, it's not going to end this way. It's going to actually end this way. Oh, like, no, the alien has a shield itself. Okay, so Bill Pullman, like, sacrificed himself to destroy the original ship. I think kind of like you were saying, oh, it was for nothing. I'm like, no, he, he had a meaning for dying, you know. And then, oh, this, taking control of the ship, we have to go up to space and then come back down. I'm like, it seemed like one thing after another. I'm just like, all right, like, just, I, I don't care how you end at this point. Just kill the alien and then get on with our way. It's not, again, I don't hate the movie. It's just, it's a normal action. There's nothing unique about it. Some of the dialogue is... Some of it's really good. Like, I like when the scientist friend dies, and he's like, oh, it was supposed to be a, a sweater. Like, that was like, oh, okay. Like, there's that witty, like, oh, but... Then there's dialogue where it's like, oh, let's shoot up some fire... We're like, like, let's do some fireworks, or let's do... I'm like, come on, man. Like, just... I, I know, uh, like, Independence Day Resurgent is going to win for, like, Academy Award for screenwriting. And even the first one isn't, like, a golden harmonica of a film, but... I mean, there were moments that I liked in this. The destruction scenes I love. I think that narrowing down a favorite scene, it was just the attack. I'm, I'm going to give this a 2 out of 4. Like, I'm, uh, yeah, that's pretty solid. Like, do you guys have anything to add? Or? Um, I did like when the scientist did die. It felt more of like... Real. Yeah, and, he, and more like they were really like maybe in a relationship. Because it's like 20, like, he devoted, they've been friends or something for all these years. He's looked after him consistently for the last 20 years. And he's kind of fell in love with him. It seemed like that way. And, like, and seeing when he died and how the other doctor reacted, just like this person who's been there consistently 
uh, watered the plants for the last 20 years, everything for this man. Did you like the coma thing? Because I, I was like, really a coma? Like, you had to bring him back because of that? I'm like, oh, I, I didn't mind the coma part right there. Dying. Like, it's just like, all right. I know, yeah. I, that's what I thought too. But I was like, at least, like, I'm glad he came back. I actually enjoyed his character in the first movie. Because he was like the guy who was really into the alien thing of Area 51 back then. So I'm like, okay, at least they got someone else to come back. I thought he, I thought he died too, but um, I enjoyed the movie. I say I give it a two point five. Um, I laughed. I did love the action. Um, I would have to say um, I can't wait till the sequel because this is definitely gonna get a sequel, and it will probably take the weekend for this and. Oh, definitely. Yeah, most 100%. For not just nostalgia reasons, because it's like, it's a good, just overall movie for you want to go out at night and see it or something like that. It's going to win. So, um, I gave it 2.5. But you kind of like I'm giving this a 3. I just, oh, right. I really liked the movie. It was a, a good ride. I mean, I do want to go back and see the original again. Just so I can get some certain points. But overall, I really did enjoy this movie. I mean, uh, the special effects were on point. The aliens looked really cool. I honestly forgot what the aliens looked like. All I could, all I could remember was they had tentacles. And I forgot they could communicate by grabbing onto somebody. I forgot they could do that. Um, you guys pretty much said everything. Oh, no. That's one thing we didn't talk about was you were mentioning that. I like how, like... The certain characters that had a connection with them in the first one, when the aliens were about to do something to the planet, like, they had that, oh, man, like, that was actually really interesting. Did you notice that? Like, Bill Pullman, uh, the black guy that was in the first one, mm-hmm. and the scientists, they all, like, had that, like, brain transition thing where it's like, oh, we feel like something bad is going to happen. But oh. Jeff Goldblum didn't. I was just like, what? No, because he, he was never, like, actually, like, connected. Like, these, like, the black guy is connected because he actually fought these things on the ground and in uh, Africa or whatever. Like, they were in Africa, and there was one ship left over that had aliens on there that couldn't leave. That was and, hunting people. Yeah, they were hunting people in, like, in this one African province. And for, like, the last 20 years, like, they've actually fought these things, killed them, which was... I actually, that was probably my favorite scene in the um, Area 51 when they had to kill the other one after they grabbed Bill, um, Bill Pullman. And he actually killed it with a machete. That was pretty good. Oh, yeah, his character was badass. Yeah, I'm like, double machete and everything? I'm like, he's ready to, just ready to go. <laughs> he was nice and everything, but I, I enjoyed his character. And to see that there was an after effect of having these aliens on there because they had to learn their language. Um, kind of go through what they, what they think in order to take over and kind of just wipe them out. Uh, that's all I had all to right. say. So the overall score for the guys' night crew is. I think it's seven point five. Yep, seven point five. Wait, what? Seven point five. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, what? Uh, eight. So the overall score is a two point five out of four for Independence Day. Look, if they're going to end it on a sequel, all i got to say is I want to see, like, a disaster cinematic universe, Independence Day, with 2012, and, well, San Andreas. <laughs> I want all three of those movies in a cinematic universe. No, we don't need all that, though. I don't want to see Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Jeff Goldblum. But, um, we, oh, we were really just talking about something like that on um, Tuesday night after we saw Central Intelligence. I was like, um, The Rock is just basically franchise Viagra. And he can do whatever he needs to. He he's already got another couple movies. He's about to be in the the Wolfman movie for Universal right now. Yeah, he signed a lot of contracts, but I I don't know if he'll be good for it. Like if they like when they do an Independence Day three, I don't know. Like again, this is a franchise revival film, so like hopefully like this generation will know what it is. But if they do do a third one. Let's hope that it's soon, so it's still fresh in everybody's right. mind. They, they said um, two, two years. years. Yeah. So I guess that concludes this podcast. So until next time, this has been Jared Avery. Kyle at Sean. All right, and remember to subscribe to us on our YouTube page, Twitter page, Facebook. 
Um, also, Podomatic. Uh, shout out to AdamandEve.com Tweaked and audio. Tweak Audio, along with Loot Crate. And remember, we do what we do for the sake of the podcast. Until next time, we're, we're out. out.